Hey guys, Bloodcat7 here. Okay, it is Friday, July 12, 2019, and I'd like to thank you for visiting the Stonewall Research Channel here on YouTube. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And if you would kindly hit the like button, guys, that would be terrific. Okay, well, in this video, I'd like to take a look at a supposed Incan site in uh, this place called PSAC, Peru, the PSAC Inca Ruins in PSAC, Peru. And um, there's no doubt that the Inca were there, but, you know, there's obviously evidence of very finely done precision stone uh, construction there. So, you have this precision, uh, megalithic style uh, stone construction there, and then you have the typical sort of uh, smaller stone, um, irregular stone construction uh, that's typically associated with the Incas, although it seems like uh, mainstream would like to infer that these two styles belong together and it's just stylized elements of the same construction that this you know made during the same time period and certainly this one they would have little to argue about here because you know they say that you know this site was uh completed in something like 1440 and the Spanish were there in 1530 and they destroyed it. So it's only like 90 years in between. So if you're saying it's like an earlier construction or a later construction, it doesn't even match what mainstream is, you know, suggesting. Because that's all they have is suggestions. They don't really know a lot about this site. There's a lot of guesses, and that's why I say these are fairy tales, because, you know, I'm not even sure if you have to be a, you know, trained professional uh, academic archaeologist or anthropologist to make some of these guesses that they make about this site, but it certainly seems to me that there may have been some different culture there earlier that did these um, precision type, right angular type stone masonry there. And then later on, this sort of very crude and primitive style stone wall construction there. And even some maybe interim period, because there seems to be, you know, even some better stone construction, but it seems in the typical Incan style. But there seems to be a lot of different interesting elements here. We're going to look at some pictures, even though that I think this Wikipedia article here doesn't include a lot of pictures of the um, archaeological site at all, or even has much to say about it. You know, so you have to go elsewhere to look and see if you can see some more stuff about it. But they're certainly not providing us with much here, although the picture they do provide us with is pretty interesting. So let me just read it to you. It's very short from Wikipedia here, but, you know, we have to point out a few things here. PSAC or PSAC, uh, possibly from the Quechua for... Natha Procta, also spelled Pisaka, and this North of Procta is some like a like a uh, pheasant chicken type bird that's there. So it's a bird. Pisak is this bird, the Natha Procta bird, which is this pheasant chicken thing. I wonder if it clocks to like a pheasant or a chicken. Is a Peruvian village in the sacred valley of the Incas. It is situated on the Vilcanota River. Pisac is most known for its Incan ruins and the large market every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday, an event which attracts heavy tourist traffic from nearby Cusco. 
Okay, so they show a picture of this nice little town there that you can visit, see the ruins, and buy some trinkets, and get drunk, and all that kind of stuff. Fun, fun, fun. I'll be there to see the ruins, that's about it. Because they are certainly interesting. Notable features. Pisac is perhaps best known for its Incan ruins, known as Inca Pisac, which lie atop a hill at the entrance to the valley. The ruins are separated along the ridge into four groups, Pisaca, Intuatana, Calacasa, and Kichiraque. Intuatana group includes the Temple of the Sun, baths, altars, water fountains, a ceremonial platform, and an Intiwatana, a volcanic outcrop carved into a hitching post for the sun, or Inti. Okay, well, you know, that may be from Incan folklore, but, you know, if there were some other people there before this, who knows what that was for, and you'll see, we'll see a picture of that, they don't show it in here, but we'll see a picture of the, um, carved out um, from the bedrock, the, you know, these uh, shapes and forms. We'll look at that later. Okay. The angles of its base suggest that it served to define the changes of the seasons. Calcasa, which is built into a natural spur and overlooks the valley, is known as the citadel. The Inca constructed agricultural terraces on the steep hillside, which are still in use today. And as you can see a lot of that. There's always a lot of pictures of these terraces from this area that you can see, that I'm sure you're familiar with, that are done in this typical sort of, you know, irregular stone type construction smaller stone. If you get see if you get the, if you know anything about it, and I do about building stone walls. If you get it down to a certain size and a certain irregularity from that, you can actually create, you know, very flat and geometric shapes um, just by picking out the irregular stones that have a relatively flat side and some, you know, other surfaces that have to be matched. But you can get it, you know, and the smaller you go, it's even better, you know. You can just get these, you know, almost perfect geometric shapes by using the smaller stone. So, it's interesting. Okay, so, they created the terraces by hauling richer topsoil by hand from the lower lands. The terraces enable the production of surplus food more than would normally be possible at altitudes as high as 11,000 feet. Okay, and probably to feed everybody that was there, um, you know, they certainly were masters of agriculture, as we find out from all the Native peoples in all of the Americas were just masters at, you know, growing and uh, managing the land, et cetera, et cetera, as we've gone over in uh, Charles C. Mann's book, 1491, with all the current anthropology and archaeology done, you know, to just find out more and more and more and more, and these people were just experts at agriculture, complete experts at agriculture everywhere. And that's why, you know, the Native Americans were schooling the colonists when they got here, because... When the colonists and settlers got here, folks, they couldn't grow anything to save their rear ends, okay? They were having a lot of problems with growing things here until the native peoples showed them how to do all this stuff. And it's always, you know, it's funny how there's always these people out there like, well, you know, the Europeans knew about, you know, using fish heads and fish to supplement, you know, use as fertilizer for their crops and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, maybe they did. Maybe that knowledge was common knowledge from like a very long time ago. But the people who came over, um, you know, these like inner city people who were coming over here, 
knew nothing about farming, nothing about living in the country, nothing. They were just indentured servants for a price, see? So they didn't know much about farming. And they were terrible farmers until the native people strayed them all out. <clears throat> okay. With military, religious, and agricultural structures, the site served as at least a triple purpose. Researchers believe that Peace Act defended the southern entrance to the Sacred Valley, where the Chococuero defended the western entrance, and the fortress at Olantambo, the, the northern. Inca Peace Act controlled the route which connected the Inca Empire with the border of the rainforest. Okay, so... You know, yeah, I, you know, as far as the Inca story goes, sure, you know, but, you know, again, when you look at the construction here, it just begs the whole question, which they totally avoid, and that's the purpose of my video here, and many of my videos, is how they avoid, you know, just explaining these things, and this one is particularly uh, curious because of the dates that they give. Or, you know, what they're trying to imply by omission, I guess. You know, it's hard to get to the bottom of it. And there's no scholarly stuff on it, guys. And look at that next. But All right. So the Sanctuary of Huanca, site of a sacred shrine, is also near the village. So we looked at that before. Pilgrims traveled to the shrine every September. One of its more notable features was a large Pisane tree, which dominated the central plaza. It was destroyed by a 2013 thunderstorm. Oh. History. According to the scholar Kim McQuarrie, which if you look her up, you know, she's just, mainstream shill anthropologist who's just, you know, she's written a number of books and it's the standard hackneyed stuff. It, you know, it's already old, you know, what she has knowledge of is already old compared to, you know, what uh, Charles C. Mann has come up with. And, you know, she's just a typical academic hack. According to the scholar Kim McQuarrie, Pakakuti erected, Pakakuti erected a number of royal estates to memorialize victories over the ethnic groups. Among these royal estates are Pisac, victory over the Koyos, Alantaytambo, victory over the Tambos, and Machu Picchu, con conquest of the Vilcabamba Valley. Other historians suggest that Pisac was established to protect Cusco from possible attacks of the Ashaninka nations. It is unknown when In Inca Peace Act was built, so get that. It is unknown when Inca Peace Act was built, since it does not appear to have been inhabited by any pre-Inca civilization. It was most likely built no earlier than 1440. So they don't know, but it was most likely built no earlier than 1440. So before 1440, and when Pizarro got there and destroyed it, okay, in the 1530s, right? The modern town of Pisac was built in the valley uh, by Viceroy Toledo during the 1570s. So, in this short period of time, remember, is when this thing was uh, built and then destroyed, okay? 1440 and then 1530. So, not a lot of time. So, if you're saying some, there are earlier construction elements and then later ones, no matter which way you look at it, it seems preposterous by looking at the site, okay, so they don't have a lot of pictures here, but some decent, halfway decent ones, let's look at some of them, okay, so here you see part of some of the rectangular and uh, round um, 
very finely cut stone block, finely dressed stone block, okay, squares, a rectangular one with trapezoidal windows, etc. Okay, some rounded corners here around this bedrock here. Just you can see the level of uh, precision here is very fine, very fine, okay. And here are the terraces that, you know, associated with the Inca and, you know, the stone wall building style. And what you can see, like the Inca Wasis here that we've talked about, the Inca Wasis in the past, right, is built in this typical smaller irregular stone, but, you know, with mortar, etc., Okay, so some more of the site with, you know, what we typically associated with the Inca type construction, or at least we thought so, right? It's the market square, and this right here, which is just fascinating to me, you see the bedrock here. And then the bedrock was obviously cut to square it off at least. And then they placed these blocks of stone in place of where they cut it down to whatever surface they needed to cut it flat or reasonably on a flat surface somehow. And then cut the stones in place in there. Look at this one. They actually rounded it the block to fit on top of the bedrock here, which I find fascinating. You can see the level of precision work that this is in comparison to what we see as also Inca work. But if it was built in 1440 and then destroyed in 1530, I mean, you know, what came first? Or are they suggesting that both elements of style, of building style, or just naturally happen together because that's the two elements? So, you know, so much else of this place here in this Wikipedia article, just a couple of interesting things there with the finely cut stone block, which I find very interesting because there's all this other construction there. And if you look, if you go for a search on the site, there's literally no scholarly articles on any except for the Wikipedia article there, if you consider that scholarly. I, I don't, but, you know, who knows what they're referring to there. They give all these books or whatever. You got to read all those books to find out if they're, what they're saying is even for real or what. But you can see what they say, even in the Wikipedia. It does, they don't know when it was built, but it was most likely built in such and such a time. So it's, it's ridiculous. It's just anybody, you know, with some basic knowledge could make those claims. So anyway, there's nothing here except this one travel blog that I thought was pretty, um, pretty good. This Greg Willis one, which he goes through this thing and it does sort of read like a fairy tale, you know, the way that he describes all the stuff. He's, you know, traveling as travel blog. So let me read it to you. We got this little bit of time. We'll look at the pictures. The Inca ruins of Pisac are scattered on a large and narrow ridge that descends into the Sacred Valley, terminating at the town of Pisac, which is also from Inca times. Pisac is a royal estate founded by the first great Inca king, Patacuti. He also founded the royal estates of Ala Taitambo, Patalacta, Winewaina, and the big one, Machu Picchu. Although smaller than Machu Picchu, the Pisac ruins are extensive and considerably easier to travel to. It has terraces, temples, and views, a complete package, and it was spared from most of the destruc destruction of the Spanish, which you find very interesting, too. They supposedly destroyed it, right? 
but all this sort of, you know, finely cut megalithic type construction there seems to be um, all spared the destruction. Was that because they, they, that was the most difficult of it to try to destroy and the other stuff was a lot easier because it wasn't so finely constructed, most likely? <clears throat> From Cusco, we started in peace. I can follow the Sacred Valley eventually all the way to Machu Picchu, stopping in Calca and Alicantambo en route. So they show the terraces here, nice picture of them there. And he tells how he took a taxi, and you know, I'm just, this is a travel walk, so you know, the wonderful terraces there, which are done in this typical, irregular, Inca style stone constructions there. Okay, Calcasa here also, uh, also in that style. More terraces, more Incan type construction. You can see the um, trapezoidal windows in these things built with the more irregular smaller stone right I'm trying to focus in on that thing for you guys there we go so you can see the trapezoidal windows and you see this uh went all went all over the window there it's done in what we typically think of as inca style ruins And then you see this stuff, and it just, you know, blows your mind to see this, okay, this really super fine work, and this is a huge lentil on here, this doorway, and some of these doorways are huge, and who are these doorways for that they're so big and tall, some of them? You know, not excessively tall, but tall compared to modern people. And look at this. How is building on the side of this mountain here, with moving these stones around for these, you know, people from even the time that they're saying, you know, 1400 AD, you know, building on the side of this sheer cliff with these giant blocks and their precision and they have to be installed with precision. Yeah, I'd like to see people do that right now. <clears throat> Wouldn't you? I know I would. I'd love to see some guys doing that right now. Using all the tools the Incas supposedly had, right? And just go up there with a bunch of guys and some ropes and some copper chisels and stuff. And, you know, smack some stones, you know, squared off at 90 degree angles like that. And, uh, you know, build on the side of a sheer mountainside there. Uh, up where there's hardly any air to breathe. Right? Sure. Okay, that's Calacasa. More terraces in the style that we're familiar with as being ink and all right. Just want to run you through this now. Just the trail up there is very high. Okay. Terraces, stairway there that goes up, and look at this thing. Reminds me of the um, Torreones. At Galena Canyon, and at Hovenweep, and at the Salmon Ruins, and really reminds me of that same sort of construction style there, curiously. Okay, so he's, do we get to the main temple site here, because that has the most of this precision cut block. And uh, it's just unbelievable stuff. 
and it's uh, basically this uh, bedrock that's been carved. And who's to say how many civilizations have been here? But you can see, again, like so many of Brian Forrest's video, the, the Incan work here, and then this precision stone cut block here. And then here's the bedrock that's been, you know, cut, flattened, and who knows if stone was on top of it or not. You know, just, again, with who are they talking about here? Yeah, this was incorporated into construction here for what? Because it, it looks good? As compared to what? I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. All right, so you can see here the bedrock, you know, carved into whatever shape, I guess, they needed. And look at this construction here. Even, you know, with like this here in this sort of, you know, curved shape here. And I just find this incredible. And who did what first, are they trying to say? Or, you know, this is inking, the other stuff is inking. Just, okay, it's another picture of the bedrock here that's been carved. And, you know, so now we may be talking about three civilizations, one that carved the bedrock and then these pieces were added later, or why would you do this? I don't get it. You know, you carved this all up and you needed to put this in there too. I don't get that at all. And then you have this, you know, obviously flat section here. And I don't know how many civilizations are we talking about. Here's some of the Inca stuff over here, the junk construction over here, you know, pretty good for, not bad at all, for building stone walls and stuff, real, real nice, you know, out of a regular stone, that's pretty damn good work, but this is, you know, that's like, you know, contemporary, right, but no, it's all the same, it's all inking, yeah, okay, Tell me another fairy tale. There's the overall site. And show a bit more of it there. More of it was like Torreon. It's like from Galena Canyon that I did a video on. Look at this stuff here. Real super nice. And, you know, again, this right here, they didn't have to shape the whole thing into a block. They could just put one side out because it's like a retaining wall, right? So that helped them. And then, but you see these huge lentils up here over the doorways and whatnot. And here's one of the springs there. Water. Awesome. And look, look at the doorway. You know, focus on it here. 